I'm just gonna be honest about this one. Not a big fan of it. This is an HP 15-DB0064NR. Though, uh, you'd be hard pressed to actually read the serial number. Because, well, HP. I've already removed a bunch of screws from the unit. Um, I've already removed the DVD drive. It's pretty straightforward. The screw lets you take the DVD drive out. Um, there are screws here, 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 here that you can see. But here's one of the first problems. You need to get underneath this strip this rubber strip and you'll find several more screw holes under the rubber strips it's a pretty straightforward disassembly it's really no different than most laptop disassemblies these days um, it's a standard palm rest as the frame construction so everything is basically screwed down to the keyboard frame which makes the keyboard and such the most difficult components to do anything with so heaven help you if you spill wine or coffee on your keyboard so I've removed all the screws and uh, I'm sorry I did some work off camera but removing screws really is the easy part anybody can figure out how to turn a screwdriver now I've also done this too you're, you're actually getting introduced a little bit late to the game this pry tool, shove it in here and pry and pry and pry. It's the same thing that all of these sort of bottom shell as cover type construction things. They all just require that you pry and you'll hear cracks, but I've already pried it too. That's how I found out there were a bunch of extra screws It wouldn't pry. Don't force things. So you pry and you pry and you pry and eventually you'll be able to just lift and things will pop on their own so let's flip it back over and if you lift be gentle but you know there you go and there's the cover now the customer brought me this computer because they got RAM for it um, real quick note the RAM thing um, isn't necessarily going to help you. You need a solid state drive, and I've recommended a solid state drive to the customer. Um, they said they were playing games, so there's a hard drive. Do we have an M2 slot? There's the Wi Fi. There appears to be nothing. I don't think we have an M2 slot. So it looks like we can't put an NVMe SSD. Um, let's check really quickly to see if... Oh, that's stuck. Why can't I get that out? Okay, hard drive. Come on, hard drive. How do I get the hard drive to come up? Oh, okay. So the hard drive doesn't want to lift, but let's check it. I want to see if we have a solid state drive slot hiding somewhere. Yeah, it's just held on with compression right here. So lift it up a little and it'll slide right out. You see we have no, we have no place for an M2 SSD here. There's probably nowhere to put an M2 SSD on this board. Um, we're just going to have to... If he wants an SSD, he'll have to get an SSD where the hard drive goes. So, I got this RAM, probably from Amazon. This is DDR4, 1.2 volt it should be. Amazon Fulfillment, I didn't know they sold. Huh. DDR4, this is 2666 megahertz, 1.2 volt. Um, pretty straightforward. Oops. If you don't drop it. Pretty straightforward. You see there's two memory slots over here. This one's empty. 
So let's get in there, open the RAM. Oh, look at that beautiful, beautiful memory stick. Okay, and because we have an empty slot, the customer's 16 gig stick will now give them 20 gigs of RAM, um, provided the technician stops dropping it. Okay, before you put it back together, if you're going to do these RAM upgrades, you need to make sure that it actually works. So flip it over and turn it on and hit F10 really, 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 really quickly. So that you can catch it and it'll go into setup. Oh, don't hit F10 a million times like I just did. But according to setup, we have 20 gigs of RAM. That's what I wanted to confirm, so I'm going to cut it back off. Shut it. While we're in here, especially since this person bought the computer used, while we're in here, go ahead and tighten down these hinges a little bit. Don't, don't do it too hard. You don't want to break the anchors loose. But these hinges should uh, probably be tightened up a little more. They're pretty flexy. And the last thing you want is for these screws to back out quickly because people ask. Battery removal. If you need this battery out, these screws are here. They're arrows here, here. There's one here. And these arrows don't actually appear to go to any. So you've got one, two, three screws and the battery should lift right up. There's no wires, it goes straight to a standard uh, battery connector. So getting the battery out is easy. If you want to get the keyboard replaced, you'll have to replace the whole palm rest. I can see the keyboard, the whole frame is held together with these plastic welds. You're not going to replace this keyboard. You're going to replace the whole palm rest. Or you're going to have to pop each one of these welds individually and there are welds holding the keyboard too and then you're going to have to use tons and tons of epoxy to fix it. It's a terrible job and I wouldn't recommend doing it if you can avoid it. Um, CPU is... it looks like it's soldered down. CPU is non-upgradable. Um, hard drive is replaceable. Wireless is probably replaceable. It's in a socket at least and two memory slots um, should be able to run up to 32 gigs easily um, don't think it can run 64 but nothing will stop you from wasting your money if you want to try not much else to go over inside so let's close it up and the customer's upgrade is done the question about the solid state drive has been answered one of my problems with this computer is the complete lack of information not only from HP but the information available from third parties such as Crucial is limited. These people that make their living selling upgrades to computers barely know anything about this machine. Um, I couldn't find any sort of service manual for this computer. I couldn't find where HP themselves had put anything online indicating that this computer has any kind of you know two memory slots one memory slot what memory it can take what memory it can't uh, whether or not it has an M2 slot well you know I couldn't find any detailed specs on this machine online and it was very annoying um, ultimately the problem is the customer wanted to order the memory themselves and I just I wasn't entirely sure what to tell them, so I verified from several sites that it, this machine, the model number takes DDR4, that the DDR4 works up to 2400 megahertz, I believe. Any higher than that, and it'll probably clock it down to 2400. I said 2400 megahertz, but I mean the uh, speed indicator, you know, 2400. So his 2666 is not going to make a difference, but it probably was cheaper than trying to explicitly get a 2400. The lack of information about this computer online is very annoying, especially since this computer is a relatively inexpensive machine sold at Walmarts um, and other places that people 
shouldn't be buying computers, but we'll buy computers. So, ah, oh, stop sliding. All those pry points need to go back. But sometimes when machines are lacking in information, your only real option is to just crack it open and see what you see inside. And uh, so we've confirmed there's no M2 SSD slot available anywhere. There's one hard drive bay. There's a CD drive. Now, now you might be able to find an adapter that will convert the SATA connector on the CD drive. Um, they make these things that fit in the CD drive bay that replace your CD drive with an SSD, so a, a SATA SSD. So if you're an advanced user and don't care about the optical drive at all and just want to have two drives in there, be it an SSD and a hard drive or two SSDs, you can look into getting a uh, drive caddy that goes in the CD drive port, but you know, most people buying this machine, a two core, um, you know, entry level AMD, low power, relatively cheap computer, um, they're not really looking to, oh, this is terrible, they're not really looking for that kind of upgrade. Um, they're happy to have a computer, period, uh, and they're not really caring too much about specifications or upgradability. They just want to get on the internet and install Office 365 from their school or whatever. So that's back together. Now when you put these back together because they're the pry type, you have to snap them, all of these little bits don't go back in all the way unless you squeeze them back down and make sure they snap together. Turn it on and call the customer. Have a good one.